Hello everybody, what is going on? Now, no shit, there I was, kind of sitting around the other day because my job, I work for Portland Public Schools in Oregon at the moment, and I was just kind of sitting around. And I was like, you know what, the coronavirus is pretty crazy. I wonder, hypothetically, just hear me out here, how is this going to affect elections? Because if there's now bans on the amount of people that can be in one area, and there's a lot of states where you have to be together in voting ballots or voting stations, you know, in order to cast your ballot, ballots, how does that work? Well, and is that going to change the historical outcome of this election because people can't meet in order to vote? Like, how is this going to mess with everything? Well, guess what? I do have some answers for you guys. Specifically, what I wanted to get into is how many delegates each state has, well, each, you know, larger state like New York City or New York, excuse me, New York, not New York City, New York, big states. How many delegates do they have? Who they voted for in the last election, which could maybe provide some sort of rough indication as to who they would vote for this time around. Granted, that isn't the case that we've seen so far. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, but just, you know, just work with me here. It's kind of interesting. And the next, how is each state voting? So is it going to be in person with new group restrictions that can affect elections? Or are they switching to mail-in ballots? Are they deciding not to hold elections at all until further notice, or did they just move the date? Guys, I can't stress how important this really is. I mean, look, imagine this. If a pro-Bernie state, or say most of the states affected are pro-Bernie, and now their voting systems are changed, that's going to give Biden the advantage. Or let's flip it around. If pro-Biden states are mostly affected, this will change the course of history. So. Let's jump into it. Also, all my sources are in the description box below and my Patreon if you are into any of that stuff. No matter, let's get into it. As we're jumping into this, let's focus on who's voting first. So March 17th, 2020, the secretaries of state for Arizona, Florida, Illinois, and Ohio, so the states that are voting in two days, they said in a joint statement that health and election officials are working to ensure the primaries are occurring as planned. Good, I think, right? Well, let me continue here. More specifically, all these states are offering early voting, mail voting, and standard voting stations. And so here's an interesting little quote that they had. Quote, Americans have participated in elections during challenging times in the past, and based on the best information we have from public health officials, we are confident that voters in our states can safely and securely cast their ballots in this election, and that otherwise healthy poll workers can and should carry out their patriotic duties on Tuesday. I always love when they throw around like the patriotic duty thing, you know, it's like such an easy out. It's like, you have to do this because of patriotism. Now, I like America. We can fix some things, obviously, but I am a big patriot. Um, I just like when people throw that in other people's face. That's all I'm saying. All right, so let's get into the nuances here. So Florida has 219 delegates. Last time they voted for Clinton, and so this time around, I would guess it's probably going to go more towards Biden. Keep in mind, Florida has a very large older population and so the people because the people who are affected are the older populations like boomers there's probably going to be a less turnout for biden however i don't really think it's going to affect the elections in florida too much hopefully me saying that doesn't turn around and bite me but we'll see now as of right now there are 21 cases of coronavirus in florida now this might not sound alarming until i mention the fact that the cases have essentially a quadratic increase meaning that the cases of, of infected individuals are doubling. And so, you know, 21 cases might not sound that bad until I say, well, you know, there could very well be 1,323 cases in a couple weeks. Doesn't sound that great, does it? Fun fact, by the way, the coronavirus can live on a surface for nine days. It's really resilient. And so, we actually have no idea on how many people actually have the cases and because of the fact that the cdc the people that are in charge of having the tests they actually lost a lot of their funding underneath the trump administration and so their ability to help is very limited anyway end of side rant now let's look into the reactions in florida so governor ron DeSantis, DeSantis, shit so he's a republican governor and he made a statement in tallahassee and he said that florida is quote unquote definitely holding primary elections regardless of the pandemic. The hell? Sorry, there's like a siren going on outside, like right outside my place. So I apologize if you guys can hear it. But anyway, this is his quote. Quote, they voted during the Civil War. We're going to vote. 
Mr. DeSantis told reporters. I mean, that's a good point. So there's in-person voting and mailing voting available right now. However, despite mailing voting increasing, generally there's probably going to be a less turnout than 2016. That's at least the idea so far. But okay, cool. Florida is on track for voting. Now let's go to Illinois. There's 155 delegates. Keep in mind, Bernie Sanders is, is losing by, I think it's around at this point, 150 to 170 roughly. So Illinois, there's 155 delegates, very significant. Last time they voted for Hillary Clinton. And the governor just canceled school due to a number of cases that are reportedly rising. So when I made this video, there was 46 cases, but we'll see if it's increased by the time this video is published. Now to ensure the risk is minimized, voting locations are being changed from areas that are considered at risk to alternative sites. So for example, I know Ohio is doing the same thing and they're moving locations from areas that were closer to senior living areas to say school gyms, churches, public buildings, and that sort of fun stuff. My question is, how far away are these new locations going to be? Because if you say have a super like liberal area and now they have to go across town into a more conservative area in order to vote, I wonder if that's going to change who they're going to vote for or if there's any sort of you know, weird manipulation tactics that are going on behind the scenes. Now, this is just me speculating. I don't have any sort of evidence. I'm just kind of talking here, so bear with me. So, okay, cool. Illinois, back on track. Next, Ohio has 136 delegates. Last time they, like the others, voted for Hillary Clinton. I already kind of talked about what Illinois and Ohio are doing, so I'm not gonna touch a lot on what Ohio is doing differently. You know, they're, like I said, they're going to be able to change the voting areas and the senior citizens, because it's going to be farther away from them and they don't want to expose the people in these living facilities to the coronavirus. So they're actually having officials go to the senior living areas and try to pick up their ballots and then move them over. So, I mean, that's pretty cool if it actually works out and there's no sort of shady dealings going on um, behind the scenes. But Ohio has 26 confirmed cases of coronavirus up to this point. Now let's move on to March 24th, 2020. So now we have Georgia. So Georgia has 105 delegates. Last time they also voted for Hillary Clinton. Georgia obviously is a more conservative state. So Biden definitely has the lead up on this. Now there's only five cases. However, what makes this interesting is that Georgia is not messing around with this at all. They're actually moving their elections from March 24th to May 9th. Now the major concern is obviously the amount of people who will be gathering to vote. Now, my question is, why don't they just switch to a mailing only system? Like maybe that would be a logistical nightmare. So maybe that's like an issue. But if that is the issue, I would just prefer them just to come out and just say that that's the issue, but nobody is making statements as to why they don't do a mailing only system. Something that you guys might find to be interesting is that Senator Wyden of Oregon, AKA the person that I used to intern for and actually got me into politics, now he's actually recommending an emergency bill allowing American voters to uh, vote by mail. It's a $500 million bill in order to help states get ready for that type of an infrastructural change. But you know, it's like, what's the alternative? So the alternative is that you have them go to stations and then get more people infected and then overcrowd the medical infrastructure or just change the voting infrastructure. I'd prefer just not to get people sick and then focus on the voting infrastructure. And don't tell me we don't have $500 million to help the sick. I know there will be people to comment on this or at some capacity, but look guys, if we have enough money to bail people out, like the banks, we have enough money to save people's lives. Boom, that would solve a lot of things. Now in Oregon, we have used the mailing system since I believe about since 2000. So what is that, 20 years now? And it works pretty well. I mean, it takes about 30 seconds to a minute to register to vote. Then you wait for your ballot. You say, cool, check off who, and then you send it in and that's it, done. And that's super simple. It's very nice. Food for thought for Georgia. All right, guys, so we are almost done here. So April 28th, 2020, there will be Maryland who has 96 delegates. They voted for Clinton. And there's 32 cases right now of coronavirus. And uh, so as of right now, which is March 15th, 2020, um, the schools, casinos, etc., are shut down and there's a cap on 250 people who are able to gather in one location. Now, in terms of their elections, there is a little bit of a, you know, juicy drama going on, I suppose that we could say. So Maryland's local, local election directors are urging the state to move to a mail-in only ballot system for April 28th primary. However, the state officials 
says, quote, they're going to move forward as if the election is going to happen as it usually does. So the local directors are urging Maryland to pursue mail-only ballots, but the state directors want mail-only ballots and voting stations. So when the state administrator for Maryland Board of Elections was actually asked about the option of postponing elections, um, she didn't actually comment on this either, so I guess that might be something up in the air at the moment. What it looks like is that even though there is an option for mail-only system, I don't think it's going to go that way. It looks like they're going to have in-person and mailing, but nonetheless, at this moment, elections are going to continue in Maryland as well. Now, the biggest one around, New York, 247 delegates. This could very literally change the course of the United States history. But they have a lot of coronavirus, so what are they gonna do? I have an answer. 247 delegates, last time they voted for Clinton, go figure, Clinton was literally the New York senator between 2001 and 2009. There's 613 cases of coronavirus at the moment. In addition to that too, they're scared about closing things, especially with schools, because I think there was, I wanna say if I'm saying it off the top of my head, I'll have information in the description box, but I believe it's 118,000 kids in New York who are homeless. And so if they close things like schools, that's terrible. Like, where are they gonna go? Also, it's pretty cold in New York City and New York. Well, you know, New York in general is pretty cold, but New York City specifically, so we'll see what happens there. End of side rant. Now what makes New York City very interesting is the fact that the state constitution requires voters to show up to the polls unless they plan to be absent or essentially what it sounds like is they are not able to physically attend. So they you know, have some sort of an illness or something. So the governor Cuomo, he just signed an executive order that says, uh, quote, potential for contraction of the COVID-19 virus should be considered an illness that will let people receive absentee ballots. So pretty much what he's trying to do is have everybody stay home and then just mail their ballots. However, my question is like, what kind of a logistical nightmare would that be? Because now you have to invest all of that money in order to have these ballots be sent to people and then have it be sent back to the stations. But on the other hand, it's like, what's the alternative, right? Like, what are you gonna do? Put a 250 person cap in New York City saying that you can't go to the stations if there's more than that? Like, you can't do that. And so. I think this is one of those situations where it's like they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Like, what are you gonna do? But that seems like a pretty good idea so far. But my question is like, what would you guys do in that situation? Would you just postpone the elections in New York, which would also mess up the US elections in general? I mean, would you try to focus on the mail only ballot or would you just have everything proceed as normal and just kind of accept the fact that there's a lot of people who are gonna be wrecked as a result? I'm actually very curious though, let me know. Either you can reach out to me on Twitter at ZachMoss6 comment in the comment section below. But if, you, if that was a situation that you had to run up against, what would you do? Next, we have Pennsylvania, 186 delegates, voted for Clinton, 63 cases of coronavirus. Now the state representative, Kevin Boyle, who is a Northeast Philadelphia Democrat, he wants to require the state to mail a ballot to every eligible voter, moving the primary and general elections out of polling places as soon as possible. So his legislation that he's proposing would uh, be $40 million for ballots to be sent to, quote, postage pre prepaid pre-addressed return envelopes. So, I mean, that's not a bad idea. However, it doesn't look like they're gonna go that way. Looks like they're gonna have the mailing option or in-person option, and then focus on the sanitization of the polling places, you know, bring your own pens, wash your hands, so on and so forth. So last, let's have an honorable mention, which is Louisiana. They have 54 delegates. Louisiana is postponing their April elections until June 20th, which is, by the way, past the cutoff date by a few weeks. So they, the cutoff date is early June, where all the states have to vote by then. And if they don't, the DNC is actually threatening Louisiana by cutting their delegates in half. Maybe then they'll rebel against the establishment by voting Bernie. Just food for thought. But anyway, I will be very curious as to what will happen as a result of this because of the fact that, look, if the boomers are primarily affected, but they also turn out the most, then is that going to narrow the margin with the millennials and the boomers and how many people turn out? I bet the boomers will still probably turn out more, mostly because of the fact that there's more mailing options nowadays. And I think that they're going to capitalize on that. The majority of the states that are affected are probably going to go to Biden. I hope they don't. I'll be very clear about that. I hope they don't. But it's a lot of times it's like the more conservative states. I don't think Bernie focused enough on kind of like the Rust Belt and the South and the rural workers and those sorts of things. I think that's kind of biting him right now. Again, I don't think it's gonna affect the elections too much, but I have been wrong. I could very well be wrong. You could cut this out, this part of the video out, 
and then you could quote me later, rub it in my face, or not if I'm right, but we'll see. Overall, looks like elections are going as planned. Doesn't seem like we have anything to worry about. Thank you guys very much for listening to this. I appreciate the fact that you guys are tuning into the elections right now, and it's a very important thing. So look, guys, you know, whatever happens with the elections happens with the elections, but at least people are at least being a little bit more aware about what's going on. The coronavirus is, in fact, showing everybody all the different problems that we're having. Problems with elections, you know, the problems with our health infrastructure, homelessness, so on and so forth. So that is the one good thing about the situation that we're dealing with. Anyway, if you guys would like to uh, like, subscribe, I'd appreciate that. If you want me to do a video following up about what's going to happen in other types of states, let me know. Anyway, peace out.